This is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, as you can see, today's video, I am going to devote the whole session into the last two and f half pages of this notoriously difficult coda in the fourth ballad. Um, last video, I mentioned at the end that uh, my uh, professor at Eastman, uh, Nalita Chu, said, joke that here everyone needs to, all the performers need to pray for the upcoming coda, uh, which is totally true. Um, the reason why this coda is, is so difficult, um, first of all, it really involves so many different types of technique. Yeah, to name a few, there is double third. Yeah, there is octave in the left hand. Da, 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 da. And there are also big leaps. Yeah. Those left hand, those leaps are, are not easy. Um, and also um, there are uh, intervals. That is moving in a perpetual motion, yeah, a very fast running uh, triplets. Um, so we're going to really uh, talk about each of them separately. And, and of course, the difficult part is that they switch so fast. I don't know how how, how long I spend on, on this, maybe a minute, yeah? Uh, so like within one minute, you have to switch into five, six different techniques. Uh, so each technique you probably spend uh, f three seconds, five seconds, and then you have to switch to another one. Um, inside this, however, musically there is a descending seconds that is really throughout this part. Yeah, it's almost like the DNA. It's it's the gene. <laughs> It's really everywhere. Um, so this is the yeah, this is at the beginning of the coda, uh, measure two uh, eleven, and if we take a look at measure two fifteen, which is in a totally different uh, uh, technique, left hand. but still a descending second and right hand yeah, it's really everywhere um, towards the end measure 227 yeah it, it's no longer that obvious it's really hidden in a perpetual motion yeah in the right hand running notes but it's really uh, it's always there okay so that's something we have to consider uh, when we decide what to show the audience yeah what notes do we need to emphasize okay um the very beginning the of the coda technically it is already quite challenging um, although it's not too big of a, 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 a stretch, um, 
this is this is why I try to analyze it and then find out something uh, so nasty that Chopin did. Um, this everything is in three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, if we were to consider the three notes, bottom note, middle note, and then the top note. Yeah, this is the bottom. This is top. This is the middle. So bottom, top, middle. This is the middle note. Middle, top, bottom. Okay. The next group: middle, bottom, top, and then bottom, top, middle. So as we can see, the order switches every single group. And that's very confusing for our hands, yeah. And the whole thing is forte, so we do also need to play them very deeply.、Um, so, and remember, when we are using our right hand to push it deeper, we always need to start from left to the right, from low wrist to the higher wrist. Okay, so it's a、uh, a secular motion. Look at my hand. The only part that I did two pushes per three note group is on the second time because I have a separate melodic notes. So one, two, three. That's one motion, two motion, and then. So because of the nature of the order, this is from the middle. So I go slide and then to the right, to the right. Yeah,、uh, I would say from bottom to the top to the middle. This is the most comfortable one. And here we have to emphasize the top. So here, really, we have to practice them slowly to make sure each group. Comfortable for our hands, and notice how closely my fingers stayed on the keys. Okay, so that when we can play them slowly, we can gradually increase the tempo. Okay,、um, the next part, measure two, fifteen.、Uh, uh, as I mentioned, both the low and then uh, you have. The the three、uh, voices and, and then so here in my opinion the double third really is not the main melody okay so you don't need to be to to play them so loudly but still we have to group them into three. Is how here notice how here there is a middle voice in the right hand, and inevitably it's another drop of second. When we have to find the angle of each three note groups, we have to also emphasize the middle voice. Okay, and here the left hand was marked marcato. So this part is relatively speaking not as hard. So we have to focus on the left hand and again group them into. Three notes. It has to be that we're familiar with the each three note groups enough, familiar enough. We can just randomly pick one, or or then we know how to play them with this loud and marcato sound. Okay, so 
it's never uh, you're thinking of the next 18 notes. Yeah, always the next three. But any one, if you uh, play them separately, uh, we should be able to play them. Um, 223, it's a new type of uh, uh, technique. And to be honest, I've never seen something like this in the etudes. Okay, so it's a running, it's almost like a arpeggio, but it's with with intervals in them. Um, and in, within that interval, we have to, of course, take care of the voicing. Yeah, it's um, but the most important thing to remember here is to forget about connecting the notes. Okay, when we connect the notes, we ruin our hand positions. And if we ruin the hand positions, we can't play multiple notes within one hand position. So here, what I would do is I would practice from the third note to the first note of the next group. Okay. And learn how our wrists need to adjust. Because here we are going from a black key to a white key. So the angle is different than the next group, which is from a white key to a black key. And then. Yeah. And this middle one, or the second note, really is a byproduct. We don't need to literally use a separate motion to play that. Yeah. If we know how to play these, then it should be easy. Um, the left hand octave really isn't easy because the uh, black and white key uh, has no pattern. Yeah, Black, white, black. And then black, white, black, and then black, white, white. Yeah, you name it. So we have to learn them again. Three note per group. Even when we play them connected together, uh, it's inside secretly we're thinking in three. Um, uh, actually, the ending gets easier. Yeah, there's no more double notes, no more octaves. But do uh, keep in mind that there is a hidden uh, motive. And why is that significant? Because for the last time, we no longer have a descending second, but a ascending second. Yeah, I think that's why Chopin put so much ink in, in onto that note. He, he put a diminuendo on that one note. Uh, I don't know exactly what he was thinking, um, but one rule I know is when the composer really want to make some notes special, he will put dynamic marks on that note. Yeah, so I guess he, he wanted us to hear from B dum, da, di, di, dum, di, to da, dum, di, dum. Yeah, I guess the triumphant feeling. And this ending, again, it's, it's quite tricky because the Rhythm is in three, but then technically the note patterns are in four. That's the rhythmic pattern, but that's the note pattern. Um, the most difficult part is how there are three types. Yeah, one, two, three, and then it's a repetition uh, uh, octave lower. The first two starts on the black key. Okay, and we know we have to use our left hand thumb on the black key, and thumb is shorter than the other. So the, the black key is further because we have to <laughs> go forward a little more. So we have to really keep in mind that here the wrist has to be so flexible that it allows the, the left hand thumb to again reach the black key. Yeah, the third, third one is the easiest. 
And here, once it stays within, then it's easier because you're not moving. Okay, so again, uh, so many different types of technical difficulties. Okay, and I have to switch them so fast. Uh, maybe every five seconds, then the next one comes. Every five seconds, then a new types of uh, of technique. But my general uh, suggestion is to break them first of all, break them into pieces, and to play them slowly, to learn them slowly. <laughs> When you're speeding up or you're playing in a normal tempo, you're thinking in smaller chunks, okay? But don't speed up or don't go to the uh, normal tempo before you can fully master how to play them in the slower tempo. Um, I hope this is helpful. Um, I felt like I'm again teaching etudes, but really this last two pages is as hard as any uh, etudes, if not harder. Uh, next week, uh, we will take a little break from the ballads. Um, I'm currently working on the third one and then learning the second one, but we will take a break from them. Um, and I hope to have a, another special epi uh, episode of um, teaching arpeggios yeah how to practice arpeggios efficiently that i have uh, some suggestions i hope can help you guys thank you so much for watch for watching i will see you all 